archaeologists and other scientists search the world over for clues about our distant past. The tools, weapons, and other artifacts they uncover provide important clues about the life of early humans. But human skeletons are especially valuable finds. By studying human bones, scientists can determine the physical characteristics of early humans and get an idea of how they might have lived. For example, the shape of the spine, the length of the legs, or the size of the feet give clues about how our early ancestors looked and walked. The condition of their teeth and bones help scientists paint a picture of what early humans might have eaten, what dangers they faced, and how healthy they might have been. But possibly the most important clues they find are in the actual DNA of these bones. This cellular blueprint helps scientists fill in the timetable of human development. But you know, scientists aren't the only people who have an interest in ancient remains. In this CNN story, you'll see how a battle for bones can result when cultural and religious concerns conflict with purely scientific objectives. The skull and bones of Kennewick Man turned up on the banks of the Columbia River in eastern Washington more than a year ago. Now they're locked up in federal custody as American Indians, pagans, and scientists battle over their future. I think that to a great extent it is power struggle. Uh, there are a lot of overtones of, of racial politics here. The battle for the bones began after anthropologist James Chatters found a spear point in the pelvis and sent a bone for carbon dating. The lab said the bone was more than 9,000 years old. We had something extremely important, one of the very few complete skeletons anywhere near that old uh, in the Americas. Now all James Chatters has is this plaster cast. He calls the bones a scientific treasure. Native Americans call them an ancestor. And if anything is frustrating, it's that um, we don't have the ability to be able to quickly reinter um, our tribal members. And this is just one situation out of many. But Kennewick Man may be even older than the ancestors of Native Americans and may look more like Europeans. Hail Odin! Hail Odin! The Osetru people follow a Viking pagan religion. They claim Kennewick Man has returned to them with a yet-to-be-understood message. It is not an accident and not a coincidence that he has emerged in this time and in this place. The bones may speak religion to pagans and Native Americans, but their DNA and scars speak science to James Chatters. Like following someone's tracks for years, and all of a sudden you catch up with them and they turn around and they're not who you expected them to be. It really changes your way of thinking. Who was Kennewick Man, and how did he get here? Scientists say the bones may hold the answers, but they won't know them until they can hold the bones. Don Knapp, CNN, Kennewick, Washington. Who owns Kennewick Man? Since the bones were discovered in 1996, they've been at the center of a long legal battle for control. American Indians argue that Kennewick Man is their ancestor and should be returned to them for a proper burial. Scientists argue that the bones offer an important window into the past and need to be studied. In early 1999, a group of scientists won the right to study the bones, but Kennewick Man's final fate has not been determined. If you were the judge, how would you settle this battle for the bones? 